Moto America on DN Sports is presented by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires, the only motorcycle tires designed, tested, and made in America for how you ride. And powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. Okay, we are back at New Jersey Motorsports Park, and let's go to Hanalopa, who has our Pizzazz Superstock 1000 points leader. That's right, I'm down here with Matthew Skoltz. Now, despite some mechanical issues you were having, you still managed to, to come to a third place finish yesterday. Tell us about what was going on and if you made any changes going into today's race. Um, we're not actually quite uh, sure what, what, what happened to us yesterday. It seemed that we had problems with the traction control, but you know, um, we're pretty sure that we managed to, to sort everything out. So I'm just really looking forward to the second race. Uh, obviously, during the morning warm-up, we, we showed a really decent pace. So. I'm just looking forward to it and you know I'm trying not to think about the championship but it's pretty hard not to at this point so but we'll, we'll just take it as, as it comes and hopefully we have a decent race out and we can celebrate afterwards but for now we'll just focus on racing tw 23 laps hard. Thanks Matthew good luck. It, it, he always has like he's he he's kind of snug right now I mean I know he's <laughs> being kind of mellow but he just seems he's got this championship on the line and the possibility of winning it and I don't know I mean yesterday was a big disappointment it was traction control issue he talked about his team talked about it and you know it's just it's it's one of those things where you know you just kind of hoping okay let's just get everything clean because by the way they had a data logger on Friday that went bad they got that overnighted and they got that sorted and then the TC issue happened and the TC issue is this Jake as the tire started to wear down a few laps into the race so five laps into the race when it starts to spin up a little bit it was intermittent on the gas so it would it would, it would cut it out and then let it go, cut it out, let it go. So he had to figure out in a few laps that as he came through the corner, he would lift the motorcycle up on the meat of the tire, and he was only able to drive straight up and down. But it took a little while to figure that out, and that's why he started to drop back. And so they, they came in, obviously, and they got the computer on there, and clickety-clack, clack, clack, and next thing you know, they got the thing sorted out. So It just goes to show you, Greg, I mean, even the guy leading the championship, He's fighting through issues during the race. You know, it, the weekends usually don't go easy for these guys. Almost never do you yeah, just roll the bike out of the truck, don't touch it, go out there and race and win the race and go, yay, everything's good. I know. Usually it's a battle all weekend long to get those bikes up and running the way they need to. Talking about battling this rider right here, Roger Hayden, who has a lock on second place in the championship. Six pole positions on the year. By far his best qualifying effort of an entire season. He's looking to fight it out. He's on pole, a 20.378 on those qualifying tires. Then it's Hayes and Elias on row number one. Kyle Wyman, who's had a very good weekend finishing six yesterday. And then Skultz and Jake Gagne. We expect Jake Gagne to be a little bit closer to the front than he was yesterday. Yeah, Gagne had a great race yesterday. Looking back at row three, we're looking at Jason DeSalvo, number 40 on the WD-40. Josh Heron, the factory Yamaha, filling in for Cam Bobier. You know, did a great job yesterday uh, just nipping. Jake Gagne for fourth place. Yeah. Looking at Danny Eslick, won yesterday's Superstock race from row three. That's great, you know. Going back a little bit further, we're looking at Jake Lewis, Bobby Fong, and Sylvain Berry. Actually, he's a two-time World Superstock champion. He certainly is on that BMW, trying to make it work and possibly stay. Hayden Gillum, Bryce Prince, Frank Babushka Jr. in the mix. Ant West, yep, the Ant West from Australia. Former MotoGP racer Max Flinders and Felipe McLean rounding out your so seventh row on this grid. And again, two classes, just like we saw in Super Sport, Super Stock, this Motul Superbike class and Bizazz Super Stock 1000. Okay. Jake Zemke, you're joining me up here. And one thing I want to talk about being that you're a former Honda guy is right there in the left part of your screen, top of your screen now, Genuine Roaster Chicken Honda's Jake Gagne. He's had a surge as of late. He finished fifth, but it was a close one as he was battling it out with a factory Yamaha. Here's the thing. They made a shock adjustment because where he's losing time is not where most people lose time. They're losing time when the traction is good. At the beginning of the race, it's at the end of the race when the traction goes away, the bike seems to work a lot better. So they've made some adjustments to that. Also, last race, at pit race, they went through 11 rear brakes. Okay, so the rear disc, rotors. The rotors, the yeah. discs, okay? This weekend, they, they found a solution between pit race and here. They've gone through none, but also they have retrofitted a CRF 450R rear brake master cylinder. So that's what he used to brake with. It gives him the same feeling on, you know, as
as he has on his motocross bike. So that's like customizing that bike because they don't have the luxury of electronics and traction control as he does it all himself with his, with his right foot. Yeah, definitely, Greg, and that, uh, that's a tough thing to do. You know, Jake is doing an awesome job on that bike, and they definitely had, what you said, a surge here in the last part of the season. Uh, yesterday, it was great, but right now we're going to go to the Kawasaki Keys of the Race. Hey, can Jake Lewis stay in the Superstock Championship hunt? That's my question. Skultz has a good lead, but Jake Lewis needs to do everything he can to come away with a victory today and, and minimize that points gap. Next one, Heron in the mix. You know, yesterday he finished fourth. He wasn't that far behind. Can he get up and challenge for a podium? We're going to find out. You know, he's got Cameron Bobier's factory Yamaha. Can he put it on the podium? We'll, we'll find out. You know, it's going to be a, a good one. And the last one, like I alluded to earlier, was Elias holding back at all yesterday? He might have been. I don't know. But we're <laughs> going to find out here in a few minutes. Let's go to Hannah, who has our Motul last minute report. Hannah? Hannah? All right, well, we lost Hannah there for a moment. In that Motul last minute report. But we're going to get race action underway here in just a moment. As riders still forming up to the grid, including Tony Elias as he makes his way to his third place spot. Critical moment in this race to get this sorted out. And by the way, Tony Elias wearing that gold helmet that he put on after winning that championship. You can see left part of your screen, that HJC helmet. So Tony Elias, number 24. If he stays here for next season, he'll be wearing the number one plate. The lights go out. It's our last race of the weekend. And Roger Hayden with a great launch down into turn number one. Tony Elias as well. Josh Hayes looks like he might be swallowed up by Kyle Wyman. So Kyle Wyman slots himself into third spot right behind Tony Elias. It's Roger Hayden on the Yoshimura Suzuki with the lead. Yeah, and that's the kind of start Roger needed, you know. Roger, if he can pull off a win, if he could go out front and maybe just inch away like he did at Pittsburgh, man, that would be an amazing feat for him this weekend. Number 50, Bobby Fong in that picks over latest motorsports. Didn't get a great launch. He was a double race winner here last year. Got lapped yesterday. So Fong in that Kawasaki as they developed that bike just didn't really work here. You see Fong go by your screen there. Jake Lewis and Toe. So Roger Hayden, Pat Wyman up in his second Kyle spot. Wyman by Tony Elias. Wow. How about the privateer Kyle Wyman on that YCRS Camber KWR R1 in second spot ahead of three factory bikes. Go and Kyle Wyman. Not ahead, he just pulled a little gap on Tony through that section. That's pretty awesome. You know, Kyle led a couple of the, set, or the first session, I believe, of the weekend. He did, he certainly did. Yeah, and he's been right at the top all weekend yes. long. Well placed within the top five in each of the sessions. So Kyle Wyman. Kyle Wyman really Roger Hayden lead the race. This would be outstanding here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Of course, YCRS, Yellow Champion Riding School. Kyle Wyman is an instructor. Look at Jake Gagne. So Josh Hayes moves up past Tony Elias. And now Jake Gagne is trying to make a move on the Honda. So something going on with Tony Elias right now, but no problems. Yeah, for Jake the Gagne, I believe, just got by. We'll, have, we'll see if they come in. He did. Field. He sure did. I, there's something wrong with Tony. You see him looking down there. You know what, Greg? I noticed he rolled up to the grid awfully late for the start of the race up from the warm-up lap. And there goes Heron by Elias. So Tony Elias dropping back okay. up the inside goes Matthew Skoltz. So Skoltz on the Yamalu. Westby Racing Yamaha. Yeah, and we're just trying to take a look as we're really trying to analyze what's going on with Tony Elias. But Roger Hayden continuing to lead the way from Kyle Wyman, Josh Hayes. Let me tell you something, Josh Hayes on that Monster Energy Yamalu factory racing Yamaha does not want to get beat by a privateer superbike, no doubt about that. But Kyle Wyman doing a much better job. A good look at Tony Elias in that helmet as the reigning national champion. And here's another replay. Tony coming on. Oh, his ooh, he was way wide coming off that last corner. Dropped both wheels off in the dirt. Oh, man. I wonder. Maybe something's going on with some wheels with him. As it, now, Kyle Wyman's closed the gap. Yeah, it's possible. Right. I mean, when you drop the wheels off in the dirt like that, it's possible to bend them as you re-enter the track and you hit that hard asphalt again. Um, but, man, look at Kyle Wyman. What an awesome job by Wyman. He's reeling Raj in. Kyle Wyman putting up 
red splits all the way across the board. So far, Kyle has the fastest lap of the race at a 120.9. And he is right on Raj. This is this is getting good, Greg. This is getting good. You know, and right behind them, we see Josh Hayes with Gagne pulling up on Hayes as well. Man, we hopefully we'll have four bikes in the lead battle here. Look at Jake Gagne. Genuine Broster Chicken Honda rider. Tony Lee is still going at it. Bobby Fong, a better run, at least in the early go of this one, than he had going on yesterday. So it's Hayden Wyman, Hayes, Gagne, Heron, Skultz, Tony Elias, Bobby Fong. Who would have thought this at the second race here at New Jersey when Tony Elias looked like he was just on fire now. I talked about it yesterday, Jake. What plays in in a championship run? There is no question about it. Tony Elias has had an amazing year. There's nothing to take place. It has been some luck, and now that he's wrapped it up, maybe a little bit of luck not on his side this time. Off into the dirt <laughs> goes Josh Heron. Yes, not as indeed. extreme, though. Not as extreme as Tony did on that first lap, but, you know, Tony... Man, I, I, I wish we could get inside and find out what's going on there, but if you think about this, Tony Elias has been first or second in every race except for the one incident they had at Virginia where he didn't finish the race That's and had right. an that. But he's been first or second every other race, and now we're watching Tony back in seventh place. We've seen him back before. As I, I like the jump of the Quicksilver latest Motorsports Kawasaki of Bobby Fong. He had a nice jump over that hill, but Looking at Tony Elias, this could this could definitely snap a streak for him of finishing races. But it's early days, and we've seen Tony maybe you know he'll get something sorted out. He'll figure out how to ride it and claw his way back up front. I am actually stunned at what I'm seeing. I'm happy and stunned at the same time. Yoshimura Suzuki's Roger Hayden leads the way. We expect that, but right on his tailpipe is Kyle Wyman, the privateer on this YCRS Camber KWR out of New York. He's out of New York technically, but he's been on the road the entire season living out of his trailer, putting this effort together. And as they come across the line, 21-2-0 for Roger Hayden, 21-2-5 for Kyle Wyman. Kyle Wyman still holding on to the fastest lap of the race at a 20.9. He did that on lap two. Wow. Yeah, he is so good, and we're taking a good look right now at Jake Gagne on the genuine Broster Chicken Honda, right behind Josh Hayes on the, the Monster Energy Yamaha. And, and Wyman looks like he's ready to make a move. Oh, seriously, I mean, it, it's incredible. And then we drop back to this paddle. Monster Energy Yamaha Lube Yamaha Factory Racing. There Josh goes Tony. Aaron. There goes Tony. And Tony underneath Matthew Skulls. Like I said, sometimes Tony has a bit of an issue at the beginning and he starts to sort it out. Whether that's changing some knobs on traction control, whether that's figuring out how to ride the bike differently. You know, maybe he felt something and it's getting better. Fuel load has been an issue from time to time. If the fuel load drops, the bike gets better. Don't count Tony Elias out of this one. Well, at this point, Tony's 3.2 seconds back of the leader. So, you know, we'll see see what he can do. But here's a nice tight look at Josh Heron going through turn 11. Josh Heron looking good. The team, and he and his old team from 2013 when he won the Superbike title are back together, getting the band back together. The big thing for Josh Heron is getting comfortable on the motorcycle, the ergonomics. Cameron Bovier's settings, his foot pegs, his seat height, his bars, Actually cramps up as there he goes. Tony goes up the inside of Josh. Whatever was going on with Tony, it looks like he's starting to get it figured out. He was a couple laps behind those guys. Back up front, Kyle. Back up front, Kyle Wyman is still in the mix. Hannah, what do you have on Kyle Wyman? You'll notice that his title sponsor for this weekend is YCRS, which stands for Yamaha Champions Riding School, for whom he is an instructor, and their, their course is based at this track. So he's got a lot of laps, a lot of time around this track, especially from an instructor's perspective and working with a lot of people from the ground up, teaching them the basics. So I think that that's definitely been beneficial and why he's been so successful here so far this weekend. Yeah, without question, and Jake, it's not track knowledge because all these riders have been here plenty of times. I think it's more confidence. When you get a lot of laps around a track, you know as an instructor that when you get a lot of laps around a track, when you show up and you just kind of come in and out all the time, it just clicks for you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's definitely confidence. And, you know, for Kyle this weekend, it, he rolled it off the truck. <laughs> he has been going yep. for it in every session. You know, looking at these times, he's, he's matching Rod. He's matching Rod's times, and he is right there. He looks comfortable doing it right now. He's 
And this is an impressive ride from and, Kyle Wyman. And these two are pulling away from Josh Hayes, who's won here 11 times, and pulling away from Jake Gagne, as Gagne now is going to try to make a move. Nope, he doesn't do it, but here comes Tony Elias. Look who's right behind yeah. him. Tony Elias backing it in, yeah. and he's coming, buddy. He's and, coming. And look who Tony's dragging up with him, Josh Heron. Yep. And Josh is really good. Josh Heron is really good at latching onto the back of somebody. So he was there for just a moment, but Tony Elias now. Lap. Jake Gagne in his sights. In the last lap, Tony ran the fastest split of the race in sector one to catch these guys. So he's coming. Whatever whatever drama he had yeah, in there, yeah. don't worry about it. Here he comes. You know, we said he was 3.2 the last lap. He's only three seconds behind this lap. He, he gave two seconds on the leaders while making passes. And we have 17 to go. So it's not beyond the realm of possibility to say that Tony Elias can put himself in a position to potentially win this race. There's that famous pass. Elias loved that spot of the racetrack, and he just slides right up the inside of Kanye, and he will take over fourth spot. Next on Tony's hit list is Josh Hayes. And Hayes just doesn't look as comfortable as he was yesterday. Not running the pace in terms of with Roger Hayden and Kyle Wyman as he was able to do yesterday, but Hayes, number four, four-time Superbike champ. We mentioned it before. Has over 60 Superbike wins to his credit. Only Matt Malatin has more wins in the Superbike class than does Josh Hayes. Well, is Tony going up the inside already? Oh, man. Not wasting any time. He's coming. Tony is coming. Is Hayes going to fight back? Well, for a moment, he oh, couldn't here comes Gagne. Here comes Gagne up the inside of Hayes. So Gagne takes over the position, and now Jake's going to see if he can go with Tony Elias. Now keep in mind, if they sorted the problem out with this genuine broker chicken Honda, meaning the lack of grip at the beginning of the race, and they still have a motorcycle that will go quickly at the end of the race, because sometimes you can you can yeah. fix that problem and that can go away. And Greg, we're eight laps in. Right. We're eight laps in right now, and he's he's right there. So yeah, maybe he can latch on to Tony and see if we can drag him up to the front. Jake, we all know that Jake Donner is one of the most talented motorcycle racers in this pack. It's just a matter of what ride he gets, what team he has, how much different stuff they have to do, because you know this team has gone from manufacturer to manufacturer. This is the first year of the CDR 1000 RR. You know the electronics package isn't there, but they're working on a motorcycle that's rideable for Jake Gagne. All these custom things they've done, from clutch to to brake rotors to master cylinders, they're really working on it. They're running out of time in the season, but you don't know what's going to happen with the Broster team for 2018 as it relates to Jake Gagne. What do you see? And, and, and Jake. When he initiated that corner under the bridge into the final corner, when he threw the bike in there, he lost the rear big. But you know what? The kid can ride the bike. Like you said, he's an extremely talented motorcycle rider. And watching him ride the bike right now, he's getting everything he can out of it. Well, Kyle Wyman is an instructor, like Hannah said, but right now he is in school because he's watching one of the best in the world, Roger Hayden, on the Yoshimura Superbike, do laps around this racetrack. Last time by 21.6, Kyle Wyman was faster by two tenths of a second. He did a 21.4. As a matter of fact, that last lap by Kyle Wyman was the fastest rider on the racetrack. I tell you, he's not letting Raj go. He he's got his claws dug in deep, and he's not letting him go anywhere. And you know that the big story is now: can Elias catch these lead too? Can he run him down? Well, let's see. We have 15 laps to go. Tony Elias is about 2.8 seconds adrift of Roger Hayden. So you're talking about a couple tenths of a second per lap. And as we get to the halfway point in a few laps, that's when higher performance is going to start coming into play. Also, for the Yoshimura Suzuki riders, what settings, what extra settings do they have in the TC? Yeah, for sure. Look at Kyle run up on Raj. Let's see what uh, he can do down the straightaway. You know, I, would, I would love to see Kyle Wyman lead this race. You know, that, that, that would be a story in itself right there. The straightaway is a tough ask, okay? Because we've seen the Oceanera <laughs> Suzuki just have tremendous amount of top-end speed this year, and they keep developing it versus even the factory Yamaha R1s. But Kyle's still hanging in there. Here's your championship points leader, Matthew Stoltz. Yeah, and look at who's there today. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby Fong. Fong. Yesterday they had an issue with that bike. Not sure exactly who it was, but uh, he's, he's back on his normal pace today fighting for that super stock win. Kyle Wyman, that last time by, tried to get deep into turn one. He just gave up a little bit under braking. Tony Elias started to break away from Jake Gagne by a few bike lengths. Wyman right back onto the tailpipe of Roger Hayden. I mean, 
And the thing about Kyle is that's so impressive right now, Jake, is he doesn't look desperate at all. He just looks very comfortable on this motorcycle. The problem, of course, you know, David Anthony mentioned it in the Kawasaki profile earlier. Kyle's the team owner and the rider. It puts a tremendous amount of pressure and workload on you. And a lot of these riders, like Roger Hayden and Tony Elias, Josh Heron now, Josh Hayes, their job is to ride a motorcycle. They get to spend 100% of their time focused on going faster. Kyle Wyman's got to worry about finding sponsors, getting his trailer around, finding money, you know, getting his crew happy, and it's quite a, it's quite a task. And so watching him run up front right now, he's got to be opening up a lot of eyes. Yeah, this is an impressive run for Kyle Wyman, let me tell you. Raj is riding so good right now, you know, obviously with the, the, the pole here this weekend, you know, the, the dominating win at Pittsburgh. And look at Kyle, he is right on him. He looks like he's ready to go. I'm telling you, we're gonna see a pass out of Kyle Wyman pretty soon. There's a couple of turns, those last three turns they were in, Kyle has Roger's number. Okay, what we're looking at this next time by the strike, we wanna see if Tony Elias is making any inroads because Visibly on our screens, it doesn't really look like it changed. No, it he's, like still kinda... he, he's still three seconds back off these guys. The, the gap has not changed. They're not reeling them in. They're matching the pace from, you know, Elias and Gagne are matching the pace of Hayden and Wyman, but they are not getting any close to the leaders. Roger Hayden talked to me yesterday about finishing second to his teammate and his teammate winning the championship. He's so happy for the Yoshimura Suzuki team. Roger's so all in with the team out of Chino, California and his guys that he was happy. This one instance to finish behind Tony Elias as Tony wrapped up the championship with the win. But he said, I'm going for it tomorrow. And that's exactly what Roger Hayden is doing as he has been towing Kyle Wyman to an incredible race. Wyman continues to put the pressure on Roger Hayden. The so Roger Hayden 21-7. Here's a replay of Hayden Gillum. Oh. oh, there's Hayden Gillum, yeah. So he's got no, no front no fender. fender. Yeah, 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 exactly. Let's see what happened. So Hayden Gillum, the 169. As he goes breaks here. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, and it hits Danny Eslick's fairing. Look at Danny just yeah. shaking his head. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah, as, as he went to the brakes, the, the tire grew as he was on the brakes, and it pushed up into that front fender, and you saw the, the tire just rip that fender off and fling it right back at Danny. Wow, how about that? So, you know, the question is, I think, Jake, the, how much does the front fender impact any of the handling on your motorcycle? I know in automobile racing, you know, if you lose, especially in Formula One, you know, if you lose a, a millimeter worth of carbon, it just messes the handling up. Yeah, for sure. You know, the, the, the front fender, as far as aerodynamics go, it's not going to change a whole lot. As you can see, looking a little bit closer at Kyle and Roger's bike, it does deflect the air around the fork tube a little bit, but that's more to protect the fork tube than anything. It does add a little bit of aerodynamics, but not enough that he's going to actually feel on the motorcycle. That part of your screen a moment ago, you saw that Jake Gagne has gotten on the back of Tony Elias. And last time by, Gagne and Elias doing the same times as our leaders. So it was a 21-8 for Roger Hayden, a 21-7 for Kyle, 21-7 for Tony, a 21-7 for Jake Gagne. 22-3 and 22-5 as Hayes has fallen to the clutches of Josh Heron. So Heron now in fifth place, Hayes back to sixth. Matthew Skull continues to lead the way in the Superstock 1000 championship over Fong and Hayden Gillum. Where's Jake Lewis? Back in 12th place right now. That would mean, not 12th, because we got to look at that individual. Here's a good look at the battle for third spot. So Jake Gagne had gotten right onto the back of Tony for a moment. But Tony is amazing in the turn one on the brakes. And he's able to pull away from Gagne. Well, Elias just ran the fastest sector two time in the whole race. That's oh, what you see in the gap for him right there. Yeah. But Jake, yeah, he's fighting back. He's not letting him go, that's for sure. Big Gagne out of California. After pit race, he went home to Southern California, San Diego area. He surfed and he motoed. And he said it was awesome. <laughs> he had a great time. He had a great off week and a half training and it's showing and a lot of people thought after pit race in race number one when he finished fourth if it was just a fluke if it was just a race if it was just a start Jake Gagne is proving that there's been some major improvements made on the genuine grocery chicken Honda CBR 1000 RR he and his crew been working really hard on that motorcycle and we know he's got the talent and it's paying off and it, 
Battle for nine spot. Our race, Super Stock 1000 race winner from yesterday, Danny Eslick. Getting by on the brakes, Danny Eslick into turn one. Getting by Hayden Gillum. Think he's a little angry that Gillum <laughs> threw a fender at him? I don't think. Uh, Not Danny. Danny knows that he didn't <laughs> throw the fairing at him, but you know, <laughs> taking a look at these guys, you got Ant West right behind him, and then right behind Ant is Jake Lewis. So you know these guys, they're they're up there battling. You know, are they battling? They're battling for the podium right now. You know they're battling for that third spot in the Superstock class. And yep. Man, this, this is a good battle for third place in the Superstock 1000 class. As you can see, it's ninth, and Danny Eslick holding on to the position. Bit of a different day yesterday for Danny Eslick as he walked away with that Pizzazz Superstock 1000 win. Back up front we go. Kyle Wyman still in tow from Roger Hayden. 21 nines. As you can see, Greg, the pace is starting to drop just a couple tenths here. Yep. Uh, we see blue flags waiting at the start finish. They're coming up on some lap riders. Hopefully that doesn't come into play in this race. But, man, it's spectacular right now. Two tenths of a second slower for Kyle Wyman over Roger Hayden. So 21.5 to 21.7. 21-3, though, for Tony Elias. Elias, the fastest one on the racetrack. Oh, lap rider did a good job of getting out of the way there. And Raj, you know, he's just eking it out. Last time by it was two tenths. This time by the line, four tenths. He's just a couple tenths quicker than the rest right now. Kyle's just starting to lose a little bit. Let's see if he can claw his way back up there. And Elias getting around that lap traffic. He hit him at the right spot on a straightaway. be able to tip it in and get right by lap traffic. There's Tony. Yep, he's, he's getting, getting closer. And you can see that, that Jake's, Jake Gagne is getting dropped off the back of Tony a little bit. That lap, Tony ran a 21-3 to Jake's 21-9, seven tenths. He's, Tony's starting to come. He's starting to come forward a little bit. He's definitely sorted that whole thing out. Nine laps to go in this one. And I know one person who's counting these laps down is going to be Roger Hayden. Roger Hayden trying to go for his third win on the season. Already wrapped up second place in the championship, so now it's all about those first place bonus checks. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And taking a little tight look at Tony here. You know, last time by, he's, he's taking, he's chipping away too. He's taking a half second out of the leaders. And he's he's working on it. Let's see what he does this time by. 21.7, took another three tenths. Now he's only 2.2 back. At this rate, he's just gonna, he's, he'll get there right at the end. He's got eight laps to go. This battle between Factory Monster Energy, Yamalube, Yamaha Factory Racing Machines. Josh Hayes and Josh Heron going after it. This, is, this reminds me of 2013. <laughs> Talking about the, the monster Yamalube Yamaha's uh, Cam Bobier sitting at home, our reigning champion. He's just sending me some text messages right now. He's at home watching on BN. He wanted to say hi to all the fans out there and thanks for tuning in. So Cam Bobier, we miss you here, buddy. And uh, we hope you think Josh Heron's doing a good job on your motorcycle right now. Can't wait to see you back here next season. So Josh Hayes, Josh Heron going after it. That's for fifth spot. As Tony Elias is starting to set sail now from Jake Gagne. Three tenths of a second quicker than the leaders. His Yoshimura Suzuki teammate, Roger Hayden, he and his crew are going to have to get some info to Roger if Roger's got anything in the tank. Here comes the reigning champ. He's coming after that number one spot. So Josh Hayes. Talked about it. doesn't look as comfortable. He looks comfortable, more comfortable than we've seen all year, but he doesn't look as comfortable as he did yesterday. Yeah, I'm not seeing him ride quite the same as I did earlier this weekend. Kyle Wyman has plowed his way back up onto the back of Raj again. Man, it, it, we look at these two though. You know, Heron's, Heron's keeping Josh Hayes honest, but yeah, Hayes doesn't look like he's quite as confident and comfortable as he was earlier this weekend. Oh, and there goes Heron by on the brakes. Side by side to turn one. Hayes doesn't want to give it up, oh, but he's got turn to. Two. Oh, wow. man. That is close race action between Josh Heron and Josh Hayes. Fifth place on the racetrack with Skultz behind him, leading the Superstock 1000 battle. And by the way, up front, Tony Elias closed the gap to 1.6 seconds. It's getting snug at the top of this race. Man, that, it was a half a second that lap, Greg. He pulled back another half a Here second. Here we go. So, hey, listen, I, I'm not sure what Kyle Wyman has on his board and what kind of information he has, but how weird is this to say? Kyle Wyman better get some info that Tony Elias is coming. If he's got anything for Roger Hayden, he's got to start making a move now and put Roger between himself and the reigning uh, and the national, the current national champion. Look at Wyman. A good shot of our slow-mo cam. Yeah, Wyman's doing such a great job, man. We're, we're 17 laps in, and he is still right there on the back of Raj. He's doing an awesome job, but you're right, Greg. Tony continues to close the gap. 
Here comes Tony Elias by the stripe. So another look, definitive look, 21-9, 22 flat, 21-9. So Elias matched Roger Hayden's time, and the gap remains at 1.6 seconds. Six laps to go in this one, though. This might be the point of the race. Tony's talked about it before. We've seen it on the racetrack, Jake, where Tony sometimes will charge. He'll take a breather. Yep. He'll gather it up. He'll say, good, I'm close enough. He's thinking about his tires, and he's thinking about his physicality. He'll say, okay, let me take a breather for one lap. I got you 1.6. Six laps to go. Time to pull the pin. So we'll see what Tony Elias has in the tank. And that's what we talk about when we say, what do you have in the tank? Look at Kyle Wine. Fantastic ride from him. Hey, if there's any sponsors out there and you want to jump into the Superbike class, <laughs> Kyle Wyman's the guy to call. He's getting tons of exposure for his YCRS Camber Racing KWR Yamaha R1. Wearing the number one plate next year if he decides to stay in the U.S. Yoshimura Suzuki telling me that they are working on some contracts with Tony to keep him here in the States. It'd, be, it'd have to be a pretty incredible deal to get Tony to not want to come back to the U.S., Tony told me. You know, it'd have to be like a factory MotoGP ride, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, Tony. Tony's definitely enjoying his time in the U.S. here. You know, it's, uh, it, it's great to have him in our series, and it's great to see him out there. And, man, he's, he's still chipping away. 1.1 back, man. He, he just took four tenths back on these guys. He's, he's going to get there, Greg. I think this is going to get really interesting. Here comes Bobby Fong. Is he looking for a move on Matthew Schultz? These guys are battling in their own race right now for the lead of the Superstock race. Now, Bobby Fong is 78 points back behind Schultz. And Jake Lewis, back in 12th on the racetrack and 6th in the Superstock battle. So if Schultz can hold on to this position, he'll wrap up that championship because all he needs is, well, basically, if he just puts it in front of Jake Lewis anywhere on the racetrack, he's going to wrap up that championship because it's 50 points left after this one. But Skultz, he heard Fong behind him. And now Skultz has got the hurry up going on. Yamalu, Westby Racing, Yamaha. Back up front, Tony's closed down. Now it just looks like one, two, three. <laughs> so it's all on for the front of this one with five laps to go. And the Spaniard, who obviously wasn't comfortable the first couple laps. Gonna be interesting to hear from him, no matter what, after this race, on what happened. But like I talked about, you just can't count him out. If he's circulating on the racetrack, he's never done. He's got so many laps, so much skill, so much desire that he'll figure out how to ride around any problems he may have. Roger Hayden needs to get a move on. Kyle Wyden needs to get a move on. Tony's right on his rear tire now. You know, and uh, man, it's, it, it's go time now. It's four laps to go. Tony's just getting its way to the front. They're coming up on some more lap traffic. Kyle Wyman's doing an awesome job in second place. And man, but ah, Tony's coming. Tony's, Tony's coming. coming. Tony's coming. We've had only five different riders stand on the podium in the Superbike class this year. I'm sorry, six. Six riders. Of course, it's been Tony, Roger Hayden, Cam Bovier, Josh Hayes. Bobby Fong has been on it twice. And Josh Heron stood on it one time as well. So for Kyle Wyman, this would be some accomplishment if he can hold on to a podium spot. For sure, but let's talk about Roger Hayden for a second, okay? okay? Because we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're watching Tony close this, and we keep talking about Tony, and we're talking about Kyle Wyman. What about Roger Hayden? He's leading all these laps. It, He's led every lap so far. He is? He's all, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's four laps to go. There's lap traffic. Yeah. And Kyle Wyman right now is setting the pace for Tony Elias. Tony, I don't think has raced that much with Kyle Wyman. So we know where Tony's going to make his move. Yeah, I think Tony's not going to waste any time. I think we're going to see it in turn one right I now. I put one nickel down on this move. With Tony Elias in and out of the draft. You can He's see the head shake. It. There it goes. There it goes. Sideways and by Kyle Wyman. So he'll take over second spot. But Kyle knows. This, this, is, this is that part where if you're Kyle Wyman, you say, okay, you know, oh my goodness. The number one plate, the national champion, the guy who's won, you know, nine races, been on in second place seven times, just went by me. That's awesome. Or I got to go get this guy and fight back. <laughs> I don't think he had that much time to think about it, Greg. Oh, no. <laughs> I think Kyle's just got his head down and he's doing everything he can. And, you know, he's riding a great race. And if he keeps it up, he's going to be on the super bike podium today. All right. I think I talked about it about lap three that Tony Elias is not out of this race. He had enough time left in this race to go catch his teammate, Roger Hayden. 
and Tony Elias turns, he's caught Roger Hayden. He's, he's there, he's close, you know, but like I said, Roger's been the one who's been setting the pace. We're gonna see if he's got anything extra left right now because Tony's there. Yeah, but Tony, he, he just latches on to you when he's this close. He'll just find a way to do it. You know, he'll find a way, and he's getting close. And this is going to be the telltale sign right here to me. As we get onto this front straightaway and we get down into turn number one, we're going to see what Roger has on breaking versus Tony. Roger got a great drive out of that final corner, but there goes Tony Elias. He closes up the gap by about three or four bike lengths. And oh, last yeah. time by, he went half a second faster than Roger Hayden. Well, we've got two laps to go, so <laughs> we're yep. going to find out real quick. And Roger knows he's got the information on his pit board right now. Yep. He knows Tony's, Tony's there. there. Tony's there. So Rod is not playing around. He's going as fast as he possibly can with the equipment he has underneath him and the tire he has underneath him. It's now down to this. A lap and a half to go. Tony Elias, who is as, back, as far back as seventh place early on in this race, We've watched Tony make passes into turn seven. Is that going to be a spot or is it going to be turn one? What do you think, Greg? Uh, it depends on how much room Roger's going to leave for him. He's kind of setting it up. Nope. I think he, I think he's looking at turn one. I, I think that Tony's looking at turn one. He's been strong there all weekend. We're coming in. We're going to get the white flag this lap. And I, I think Oof. we're going to see it's a great race on this last lap. Roger Hayden starting to spin up on the rear tire. You saw that motorcycle go sideways on the gas. We're going to see, once they transition onto the front straightaway, Roger Hayden had a good drive last time by. Roger Hayden, Yoshimura Suzuki. He would go through the final corner to take the white flag. Raj gets it up on the meat of the tire, gets a decent drive. Tony's close. He's going to go for the move right now. Here he goes, up the inside, side by side. Oh, they nearly touch. Can't Tony hold oh, on? Oh, Roger out the dirt. Out. Roger's no. in the dirt. There goes Kyle Wyman. Oh, Raj kept it up, man. It looks like he'll still be able to salvage a third, but man, after leading every lap of the race, turn one out into the dirt. Unbelievable! On the final lap of the race, with the white flag flying, Tony Elias makes the aggressive pass. Roger Hayden didn't want to give it up, and how about this guy, Kyle Wyman? There have only been four riders that have finished second in the Superbike Championship races this year, and that's Tony Elias, Roger Hayden, Cam Bobier, and Josh Hayes. No other rider has finished better than third other than those four guys. And right now, Kyle Wyman has got to have butterflies in his stomach <laughs> on this last lap. He's probably listening to every little thing on that motorcycle as Roger Hayden able to keep it upright like Jake Zemke talked about and save a podium position. But how about this guy right here, Tony Elias? What a race he has had. Clawing back three tenths of a second here. Five tenths of a second there. Kept on the gas, kept confident. He knows how he can ride. And Tony Elias will take victory here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Kyle race number Wyman. two. And Kyle, Kyle Wyman, Wyman will finish second place. Raj in third. I, I'm gutted for Raj. I am. And how about this fourth place finish for Jake <laughs> Dyson? He's happy. Guys riding with really across the line. I have to say it again Kyle Wyman in second <laughs> spot. More battles going on. And Skultzy across the line. Matthew Skultz, he will win the Bizazz Superstock 1000 race. And Matthew Skultz will take home the number one plate. Unbelievable. A South African and a Spaniard. The first two to wrap up championships here in the United States in what has become an international championship. Moto America, round nine is coming to a close. And this rider, just put on a clinic of desire. What a race for Tony Elias. His margin of Tony victory. Tony Elias and Kyle Wyman. 1.9 1. 1. seconds the margin of victory over Kyle Wyman. That is it. Yeah. If I'm Kyle Wyman, I'm not doing wheelies, buddy. I don't want any oil starved in that motor. I'm like, man, just keep it on the <laughs> ground, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Kyle's worried about his motor right now. He's awfully happy. Let me tell you, that first Superbike podium, that's a great feeling. And Raj, man, I'm gutted for Raj right now. Totally he led gutted. every lap. I know, I know. Every lap. And I, then to the dirt outside of turn one, man, I, I feel for him. I think if you're if you're factory Yamaha right now, after having a moment on the championship, well, let's take a look at the this pass. Stuff. Yeah, this is the pass. So, call it. There they are. I mean, it. 
turn one, we, we expected to see that. Tony up the inside on the brakes. They went side by side through the middle of the corner. And having raced here, that's not a corner you can go <laughs> side by side no. in. It, it's, it's not wide enough. The speed you carry in there, it's just not wide enough. It gets real narrow on the exit. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Jake Zemke. It's a darn good thing that Hannah Lopa knows Kyle Wyman because it, she's been to the podium way more times than Kyle Wyman has. <laughs> I'm just, no, what I'm saying is, is that she's going to at least be able to help him with the process on what to do when he gets to victory lane. I think he'll figure it out. By the way, Kyle Wyman, the first Yamaha. The next Yamaha, Josh Hayes, all the way back in fifth. And that's a factory bike, just ahead of his teammate, Josh Heron. Wow. You don't want to go anywhere on being sports because on the other side of this, we're going to hear from Tony Elias, and we're going to hear from Kyle Wyman, and we're going to hear from Roger Hayden, and we're going to hear from Skulls. There's a lot going on. Still a lot of time left here on our coverage on BN Sports. Stay with us. <laughs> we'll be back. Welcome back to New Jersey Motorsports Park. And the penultimate round of the 2017 season for Moto America is wrapping up as we've had a couple days of fantastic racing. And what you just witnessed here on BN Sports was something absolutely spectacular. Yeah, you're looking at the number one place in Winter Circle, Tony Elias, and he is with Hannah. All right, Tony, you didn't get quite the start that you were hoping for, but you managed to fight your way to the front for a first place finish. Tell us about your race. Well, I start uh, much better than yesterday. Everything looks uh, was going in an easy way, but I don't know why uh, uh, somebody lose some part and hit my foot. And for two laps, I was feeling a lot of pain and I couldn't concentrate. Many riders pass me, attack me. Then I lose a lot. I lose like three, four laps to pass schools and uh, herring. And then after that, I, I could come back, but very slowly, always pace, pace 21. At the end, I was so, so tired, but last effort. Uh, I tried to catch Roger. I could do it. I was there. And I think that that was the only point I could try to pass him without many risk and yes we did it uh, I'm so happy uh, confirm the championship we, we win yesterday and I don't know uh, congratulations uh, Roger congratulations uh, I'm so happy for Kyle Byman he did an incredible job and well we are very happy Thank thanks Tony Thank yeah Tony Elias man what a charge through the field I mean that tells a story Here's a look at Tony Elias' start of the field, Jake. Turn one. On the brakes by Josh oh, Heron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there he goes by Gagne on the, on the brakes into seven. This, here's his spot. Turn one by Hayes. Yeah, I, I'm seeing a common theme here. Turn one. <laughs> Kyle Wyman. <laughs> you know, he just gets to the apex so quickly. Too, he does. He's beating him to the apex. And this is key when he goes by Raj. He beats him to the apex. They're side by side, but he just beats him to that apex. He's so strong into one. You know, Raj is over in the dirt there. And, and, and fortunately, he was able to keep it up and salvage that third place finish. And, but Tony, he just beat those guys to the apex every time going into turn one. That Tony was Elias, his spot. His 10th win on the season, and he started a little win streak, his second in a row. Well, let's go down to Hannah, who has our second place finisher, Kyle Wyman. Thanks, Greg. Kyle, that was an incredible race. You're in second place for the majority of that race. Roger and Tony managed to stay past you for a little bit. Roger made a bit of a mistake and ran off. Here you are for the second place finish. How much, as a team owner and rider, does this podium mean to you? Oh, man. It's uh, it's pretty emotional, you know. Uh, come here riding Superbike last year for the first year and, uh, you know, just struggling to get the, the whole package, you know. And um, I just have an incredible group, incredible group of guys, you know, but behind me. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> this is just uh, one of those days that you're not going to forget. So just so, so happy with how I rode. Just can't thank the... YCRS, Yamaha Champions Riding School, and Camber guys enough. I mean, 
the uh, the whole single event title deals I've done all year, all the sponsors that st stepped up to keep this program rolling. Man, I just I don't even know what to say. This is just this is everything we've been working towards, and and to finally uh, you know achieve a podium in this class and ride the race that I just did is just awesome. So it's it's a great way to pay back those guys, K Tech suspension, uh, Evil, uh, K and N, all all the sponsors, Millennium Technologies, and man, my family and uh, and everybody who's behind me. It's just an amazing feeling. Congratulations, thank you, Kyle. Thanks. All right. Woo! There you go. <laughs> Think that guy's happy? Yeah, emotional <laughs> on a lot of different fronts. So a good look at the privateer motorcycle. Kyle Wyman on that Yamaha R1, taking it to a second place run. And, and Jake, I mean, you, you look at it 1.9 seconds behind Tony Elias, and you never know. These are those races that could be the breakout performance. I mean, it, we could see him now starting to run up front here. It, I mean, there's really only two is. races it, left, but it still. It really is, Greg. You know, once you get that confidence that you've been there, you just want to be back there, and you know you can do it. So let's let's go down and talk to Roger Hayden. Uh. Roger, you were leading for the majority of that race. Looks like you made a little bit of a mistake, had a runoff there. Tell us about what happened at the end. Uh, <coughs> yeah, it was a good race. You know, the rhythm was uh, quite a bit faster than yesterday, so I had to talk to my team. They gave me a better bike today, and I felt a lot more comfortable. And uh, just uh, when Tony got by me, you know, he was in deep and just nowhere to go but off the track. So... Uh, but it was a good race and, uh, you know, a little disappointed to lead that much and, and get third. But sometimes that's how it goes. And looking forward to uh, Birmingham next week, one of my favorite tracks, and uh, rebound there. Can't thank Yoshimura Suzuki enough and uh, my crew, Arai Helmets, Alpine Star Leathers, and uh, Monster Energy. Thanks, Roger. Congratulations. Jake, you've known Roger since he was a little teeny tiny kid. There's a little edge in that voice, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. He's coming out swinging it, Barbara. I guarantee it. You don't you don't lead every lap of the race to lose it in turn one on the last lap, you know. And and like I said, what was my first words? I'm gutted for Raj. You yeah, know? absolutely. He'll come back strong. I guarantee it. Let's take a look at the Dunlop race results. Tony Elias will win over Kyle Wyman, 1.9 seconds. Roger Hayden, after running off the track, cost him 6.2 seconds. Jake Gagne in a solid fourth place finish. Somehow I don't think they're going to be having quite the party they had when they were able to do it at pit race. Then Josh Hayes and Josh Heron battling it out, and Hayes ended up getting Heron by half a second. Matthew Skoltz, the Superstock 1000 winner over Bobby Fong, and Danny Eslick will stand on the podium again. So a good turnaround for the Quicksilver Latest Motorsports Fong and his team. Ant West just off the podium back there in 10th spot in his, I believe, final appearance here in Moto America for 2017. Hayden Gillum without that front fender. Jake Lewis in 12th, Sylvain Barrier, and on down through the field. So quite an interesting day and an interesting tale. Here's a look at the point standings. Just to give you an idea, Tony Elias, of course, the number one plate, the national champion for 2017. And Roger Hayden Cambobier still holding on to third spot, even though he's not here. Josh Hayes with a chance to displace Cambobier for third in the title. And what does that mean? Never know. Here's a look at your Motul podium. Yes, if you're just tuning in for some reason, that's Tony Elias on the top step, as you might expect. That is Roger Hayden in third, and Kyle Wyman sits second in a fantastic race, only 1.9 seconds behind the national champ. So Kyle Wyman. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a happy kid right there. Let me tell you, there's no better feeling than getting that first Superbike podium and flying the flag for Yamaha. Oh, nice. They gave it to uh, Brad Stokes. Gets the manufacturer's trophy for Moline's part of the part of that team on the Oshimira Suzuki crew, and, and that's a lot of work, a lot of suspensions, electronics work, a lot of suspension done on that brand new GSXR 1000 as they go one two on the season. Congratulations to Yoshimira Suzuki on that as they snap Yamaha's stranglehold on the Superbike Championship that they've had since 2010. And by the way, Yoshimira going 1-2 in the championship hasn't happened since Aladdin Spees in 08. We'll take a break. More from New Jersey. BN Sports was presented by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires, the only motorcycle tires designed, tested, and made in America for how you ride. And powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. Okay, so we're back here at Moto America. 
at New Jersey Motor Sports Park, and the Superbike Race, Motul Superbike Race, and the Bazaz Superstock 1000 class has concluded, and we got to see and listen to interviews from our top three in the Superbike class. Now, our Bazaz Superstock 1000 winner, Hannah. I'm here with Matthew Skoltz, and he has secured the championship on his birthday weekend, no less. How does it feel to have your family here and to secure the championship on your birthday? I mean, this means everything to me. I mean, this is, you know, everything that I've been working for. I mean, just to have my family here means everything, you know. I mean, I've worked my whole life for this, and to actually take the number one plate home, I, I couldn't be happier, you know. I mean, thank you to, to everyone that's always been following me, helped me out. I mean, we finally did it, guys. Thank you so much. Now, when Tony Elias passed you, how much did you want to just stay with Tony and race Tony Elias? I tried to, but he's just way too fast. <laughs> so, and I, I'm really looking forward to, to Barber. And, you know, there I don't have to think about the championship and we can just focus on trying to actually run with the Superbike guys. But, you know, we are part of the Superstock field, so I don't want to get greedy, you know. I just want to finish off the season well. And I'm really happy that I'm moving up to the Superbike category for the 2018 season with the Yamalu Westby guys. So I'm looking forward to what the future has to offer for us. All right, well, Jake, Greg, did you hear that? Moving up a class next season. He certainly is. Yeah, that's the big pan of the Yamalu Westby Racing Team. And Drake and Chuck Giacchetto are taking this big time. Yeah, it's awesome. It's going to be awesome to see these guys uh, run their own super bike program. You know, the super stock bikes, we, we see they're pretty close on times, but that's on one lap. Or, or the first three or four laps, you know, and as the race wears on, you see the super bikes pull away from the super stock guys. So, man, look at, look at how happy he is. Man, that is incredible to come here to the States. I mean, you know, keep in mind, that was a fill-in ride. That was, yes. a, that was a call that he got last year to come here and fill in. And next thing you know, it rolls into a contract. And now here he's sitting with the number one plate in Moto America, the premier championship, uh, national championship in the world. Now, the one thing I definitely want to say about Matthew Skultz and his bike, which is going to be interesting, is that Chuck Giacchetto invited me to ride that bike Monday after Barber to give it a go, to see how it goes, but I'm hosting the banquet Monday night, so, so I can't, can't do ride, it. I so can't I get to it. ride instead. Hey, let's go down to Hannah, who has our <laughs> second place finisher, Bobby Fong. Hannah? Now, Bobby, I know you were having some trouble yesterday. You fell pretty far back. Talk to us a little bit about some of the changes maybe that you made for today and how you fought your way to a second place finish. Oh, man, we've been in the struggle bus since day one. Uh, you know, first practice, um, had a lot of issues just with the bike and just a few stuff but uh you know with some hard work from my team we, we got it situated for race two and uh we didn't have any more than you know 10 laps on a tire all weekend so uh, i didn't know what to expect but uh so we're a little unprepared on that uh, perspective but uh you know from being on the being in the grinder all weekend we uh we made it a second place today and uh trying to look forward to uh barbara to get the one congratulations thank you bobby there you go, Jake. Hashtag struggle bus, I think, is, you know, you go to at struggle bus. Motor, struggle yes. bus and hashtag grinder. Grinder, yeah, yeah. Bobby Fong, man, he's bringing Fong. it. He, you know. Sending it. Hashtag send it. He had to dig deep this weekend. He did. After yesterday's race, uh, he was in nowhere land. And uh, to come back and finish second today to Schultz, that, that was an awesome ride by Bobby Fong. Love to see Bobby Fong on a full-blown factory Kawasaki. Hey, Kawasaki, if you're listening, you're more than welcome to come back to the paddock and give us a full-blown effort. Quicksilver Latest Motorsports, will they be in Superbike next year? It's a big leap, but there'll be some changes coming to the class structure. It'll be announced pretty soon. But a rider who finished first top step of the podium yesterday gets on the podium once again is Danny Eslick on that TOBC Racing Yamaha. He's with Hannah right now. That's right. Now, Danny, after, you know, pretty rough practice day on Friday, a little bit of an altercation there, how good does it feel to finish on the podium twice this weekend? Oh, it's good. Uh, it's good to get back up on, you know, on top of the box and get the win yesterday. And, uh, you know, obviously, yeah, you said the, something about the little altercation Friday. It really wasn't too big of a deal. We got that, squashed all that, and uh, got it all behind us. And a little bit frustrating with the race today. You know, as good as the bike was yesterday and uh, as good as I was riding. And, and, you know, I guess maybe some guys had some problems yesterday, maybe made me feel a little bit better about myself. But we struggled today, and you know, after winning, you don't want to lose. So coming in third after the win yesterday kind of sucks, but we'll take it. You know, two podiums in a row, and uh, we'll move to Barber for the season finale, and you know, hopefully, uh, get us a double win there. Now during the race, we saw Hayden Gillum's front fender fly off and hit you. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, he passed me down the front straightaway. We get down to turn one to to get on the brakes, and 
something flew up, you know, going that speed, 170 mile an hour, whatever we're doing. I couldn't couldn't tell what it was, just something big blue flying at my face. And I guess I had a pretty decent reaction time and tried to get away from it. I think it may have grazed my helmet just a little bit. But, uh, yeah, no, it was uh, it was fun racing with Hayden. And, uh, and then Anthony West was out there. He put a, put a pass on me the last lap. And I got a turn and, and got back by him and uh, got to hold on to the number three spot here. So, you know, thanks to the TOBC racing crew and uh, everybody for sticking with me. All right, congrats, Danny. We'll see you, Barber. All right, so that's hashtag feeling better about myself and or feel better about myself and uh, hashtag reaction time. <laughs> we yeah, saw with that kind of reaction time. He could fly, fight Floyd Mayweather, I think. Okay. I don't know. Oh, see, now you're talking. That would be a big payday. <laughs> a good look at Danny Eslick on his TOBC Racing Yamaha R1. So job by he and his crew to win and finish third. So a couple of podium finishes heading into the final race of the year. And it's all better. Bump to Kyle Wyman as Tony Elias, such a nice guy and so happy for Kyle Wyman. Here's your Super Stock 1000 podium. And Trig right there, the Westby Racing Monarch is standing on top of the podium, but the man behind it all is Chuck Giacchetto. He is with Hannah right now. I've got Chuck down here. He said he's a little emotional, a little overwhelmed. How much does it mean to you to finally win this championship with your fill-in rider that you've kept for a second season now, Matthew Skolt? Matthew Skolt's going to be around a long, long time, everybody. Uh, Trig Westby, everybody at Yamalube, Roxanne Flores, Steve Friedrich, Frank Pittman, Keith McCarty, John Tomshi, uh, I, I, my mom, everybody, <laughs> man, just believing Dane Westby was on our back today and all year. The Unfinished Business Tour is over. Special thanks to Yoshimir, Don Sakakora, we love you. Thank you so very much. Next year, Superbike, watch out. Well, there's a speech to Chuck Giacchetto. <laughs> Speechless. Speech is Chuck Giacchetto. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Trig Westby and the team. That is just such a great story and a great effort that those guys put together after Dane was lost uh, in a yep. street accident. Trig decided that he thought Dane Westby would want to keep going racing, and he did. And now it's turned into hey, a number one plate. Dane Westby, 2014. Won the 600 race here. He served what, it. He sure what a did. great feeling for those guys to come back and wrap up this championship and stand on that podium that Dane stood on just a couple years ago. Moto America. That is incredible. An incredible season so far here in Moto America. We still have some championships to be decided the next time we come racing, which is just in a few days' time, because we go straight from here to Barber Motorsports Park. We certainly hope that all of you affected by the hurricane are safe and dry. But that'll do it for us. From New Jersey Motorsports Park, it's been the most Superbike Championship. We crowned two champions this weekend. More to come. For Jake Zemke, Hanalopa, I'm Greg White. We'll see you in a couple of days.